If that open doesn't get you jazzed up for some thoroughbred racing on MSG Plus, I don't know what will. We are on our third floor clubhouse TV set at beautiful Belmont Park, the Palace. And ready to go here on the Racing Report. Jason Blue and Andy Serling, Richard Migliori on the far outside. I guess this is kind of, to be honest about it, a post Gold Cup day lull and a pre Breeders' Cup lull. But still, we've got some two year old races to show, and Keeneland's in full swing. Yeah, we got some good two year old races to show. We got some good grass races to show. We got some inquiries. We got a whole lot going on. Yeah, actually, we do have a good mixed bag, and I think the inquiries are going to what makes this show interesting. All right, a couple of uh, different views of a few different races a bit later. The Knickerbocker, though, fairly cut and dry. That that being said, a thrilling finish with Messi, who quite simply would not be denied, even though Cage Fighter got a good ride from the outside and walked the dog on the front end. Manny Franco had the right instinct on the second to outside horse, all included, as he left from the gate, and then he stopped riding the horse. We are supposed to leave with a purpose. He doesn't do it, and a guy, Navarro, who doesn't ride here at all, clears from the outside post with a 34 to one shot and almost steals the race. That doesn't make the riders around here look good, Richie. Well, I, I think Manny did leave with intention, and when that other horse left with the same intention, he basically deferred to but him. But why was he deferring to a 34 to one shot? Go, man. And what happens well, with his horses? He ends up chasing three wide there, and all included his only chance to win this race. And I didn't bet him. We talked about the proud was to try to wire the field. I, and, and I don't disagree with any of that, but sometimes when you see a 34 to one shot going, you go, well, I don't want to get hooked up with him. They went 25 and one, 50 and yeah, one. Go and then jockeys, let him go and with, clear with the jockeys inside. think, myself, you know, when I rode, if I'm going and I see some real long shot going, and you're aware of who they are, mm -hmm. you go, well, if I go head and head with him, I'm going to look stupid. I'll let him go. He'll come back to me. Obviously, he went slow enough. He didn't come back. Yeah, I, I just feel like he should have had more intention. Regardless of that, they're walking on the front end. The horse who wins the race is dead last at this point, Messi, and he somehow gets to gets up to win. I would say he was best. Yo, he was best, and even uh, talking with Johnny Vlasquez afterwards, he said he had a steady uh, going to the half-mile pole, and he thought he wasn't going to get there at that point, and then the horse was able to, you know, just... He went and got this, the winner, the leader, I mean. Uh, Cage Fighter did everything but win, and it, <laughs> what a tough beat if you had him, if you rode him, if you trained him, if you owned him. Absolutely, but you can't really complain because the horse who won, and he's on the far outside at this point, and he's still back at about six. You know, Jason, this horse literally snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. He was terrific, and he's now three for four in the country for trainer H. Graham Motion. John Velasquez aboard, and Johnny V was pretty animated and pretty pumped up, Mig, when you talked to him on the Insider Show after dismounting this German bred gelding by new approach. You know, as accomplished as Johnny is, you could see how much joy he gets in winning for people. People that he's got a close relationship with, which obviously he does with Graham, he does with Dave Donk, he does with Todd. I think he's at a stage in his career where, of course, winning's always fun, but when you're winning for friends, it means twice as much. Sure, and obviously, if you're not familiar right away, he won the Kentucky Derby on Animal Kingdom for Grant Motion. I also have to think this is just a thrilling race to win. I mean, you're a rider, you're in the game, and obviously, as you say, you've won a lot of big races, but you're not that jaded. I mean, this was just a thrilling race to watch. Oh, even as a fan. Oh, absolutely. No. No, this was a breathtaking brush over the last couple furlongs for Messi. And a good job by the Connections dropping him out of the grade one sword dancer. Not that the Knickerbocker came up a slam dunk. In uh -huh. fact, it was really a grade one and a half or a grade two, to be honest about it. But just overall good placement, and it goes back to the job Graham Motion has done. And we're used to seeing him do pretty well with some of these Europeans who come to the United States. No, he's done a good job with this horse, and he can obviously go longer. You have to imagine they're considering the Red Smith at Aqueduct as the next start for him. And I think Graham found out in the Sword Dancer, though he didn't run his race at all that day. Yeah. But he's not a grade one quality horse. Run him in the races he can win. Yeah, and, and Johnny said, because I asked him, I mean, it was too bad to be true that race obviously maybe wasn't as good as you know what sure. was in there but to get beat 18 and a half right. lengths and he said he just pulled so hard that day which was uncharacteristic of him he got rank and he pulled and and he just didn't come up with his fight and sometimes when horses get ranked they're saying they just had a bad day yeah they obviously obviously did have a bad day he's better than that it'll be interesting because i imagine if he runs another couple good races graham could take another shot somewhere down the road with messi and it was really a situation for graham motion at two marquee tracks late saturday maybe in a span of five minutes there were two big photos he got the money with messi uh, didn't work out quite as well in the QE2 Challenge Cup for three-year-old Phillies as a Graham's horse, Miss Temple City, loses a close photo to her eminency. Yeah, we'll talk about the inquiry, and we'll talk about the stretch run uh, a little bit later during the race. The first thing I want to talk about is the favorite, Cerio Italia. I thought Joel Rosario didn't get the best position this race and probably didn't give her her best chance to win. Maybe he was just a little overconfident. 
you know, that happens. When a rider has great success with a horse and they start feeling like, well, I can't lose on him, they don't take the little edges that you need to take, especially mm -hmm. in grade ones. And that's one of the things we've talked about in the past. Jerry Bailey was so good for so long. He'd ride the best horse and still look for edges. Yeah, and it doesn't happen here. Now, she had good position. She's fourth from last now, sort of between the two ga two bunches of horses there. And she had decent position here, but she gets caught out very wide in that second turn. Other horses are looking to save ground, but her eminency is sitting in that very, very good spot. She's a long shot, but she's sitting right outside the leader, and they're going decent fractions, but they're not exactly flying, but they're going fair fractions. Yeah, and but look how comfortable she is. She's yeah. un unencumbered by any other horses. Just kind Kind of in a beautiful rhythm and you're sitting there you know outside a 60 to one shot you know we talk about that long it's kind of like a false uh, pacemaker or just a horse to keep their attention um, he really did work out the perfect trip she did but she was also 19 to one so it's not like she was such a, a short price and, and you know very good ride at this point by by Drayden Van Dyke who is now splitting horses with Miss Temple City Richie talk about what happens here and we'll watch the head on and you and I disagree slightly I think he had plenty of room and I think he got there and his room was taken away and he had a steady check come out and just miss in my feeling I would have taken the, the, the winner down. Yeah, we'll show the head on. And I think this is one, though, that the pan might be. You have to see the head on at least in pan together. Yeah. I, I'm not saying I disagree. And if anything, I'm biased and always want to see Graham win these races. I'll say one thing, and this has nothing to do with the inquiry. She hung at the end. She had time to get by, and she hung like yeah, that. But how much did this take yeah, away that, from her? No, no, now, I'm, not, I'm oh, not saying that plays a role. Pay attention to, to Florence Drew's uh, left arm. Well, we, we, if we have to go back again, he was basically pulling that horse to the left. He was aware that another horse oh, he was trying was. to get there, and he sh he slammed the gate. Look look at the position of his body, and look at his left elbow here. That's when a rider is breaking his hands off the horse's neck and pulling the horse in. You see, he I did see it again there. Right, sure. So now he is actually he angled her in. You could see the position of her head and where her point of her right hip is. He pulled her in, and to me, he shut the gate. Now, you can make the point he shut the gate possibly before he got That's there. That's what I'm saying. I don't believe so. If we could watch the pan again, I'd love to watch it. If not, no big deal. You know, Richie, you make great points, and I don't want I'm not gonna get on a soapbox and say I completely disagree with you, because I don't completely disagree with you. I partly disagree with you. And sure. my problem on inquiries is well, what I'm saying is I think it's close. And right. I think you can concede that it's at least close. Oh no, it was absolutely it was close, but I think he did get there, and when you get beat uh, a short head. I would have taken it down. No, I hear you. And that you make a very, very strong case for it, and I'm not arguing against that. My feeling is it wasn't 100% clear to me that the second-place finisher had the room top of the stretch. It was almost like she was going for a hole that was sort of half there. And I think it's vague enough, especially in a grade one, that I probably would have left the winner up but I'm not saying that would have been the right decision, but I think there's enough gray area. Is that possible? I think there was enough room there to put a small Toyota in there when it started. <laughs> yeah, no so. kidding. I think it when it started, but I'm just not sure the other horse was quite there. It was a controversial decision. Obviously, there's a lot of frustration on people's parts, and that's understandable. Graham wasn't there. Actually, the owner claimed because Graham wasn't there for the race. Frustrating. She was best, Miss Temple City, even though she did hang a little deal. I know we got to go to break. If I was on the second place finisher and had my opportunity to talk to the stewards, that would have come down. If you had been on the second place finisher, there would have been an Academy Award winning acting performance mm -hmm. that would have gotten the horse put up so quickly, nobody would have even thought there was an inquiry. And another grade one win to that impressive lifetime resume. Let's digress to the remainder of the show. We are back. A little harmony on MSG+. Plus. Back to sunny Belmont Park. We start a new week this coming uh, Thursday at 12.55. We were in action, a rare Monday card. In fact, we were joking around on the air. Obviously, Monday, this past Monday, Columbus Day. But outside of Memorial Day and Columbus Day, Mondays at Belmont are super rare. No, I agree. There's only one of two that we run really all year, unless Fourth of July falls on a Monday. We've an odd Monday at Aqueduct. I think we're running Monday, November 9th. We'll be there. <laughs> okay. You ready? <laughs> ready right, for the big A. We've got yes, three boss. weeks remaining. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, Friday's Buffalo Trace, Franklin County. Did you get all that? Here they go off the far turn. Lady Shipman, never comfortable. She's in the white cap. She's on the lead. Bobbling inside, outside lead, and she was picked off at the wire by Angels. Yeah, I have Vincent Richie's thoughts here. I think there's a very slight chance the rider stopped riding very briefly. She's lugging out, which she hadn't done in her prior race. Is it time to get this kind of good horse a top rider, Richie? 
You know, it's interesting, and I saw where the, the exact moment you were talking right. about where it almost looked like, okay, I got it done. You're going to see, he's going to hesitate. This is a good shot to see it. Like he was going to put a stick down yeah, right, right there, there, and then, oh, wait, someone's still there. Um, it could have been enough. I think she was struggling. I think oh, she possibly was. the ground. The, the bigger mistake to me, and, and I agree with you. I mean, you think about how she ran with Irad Ortiz in Saratoga when uh, Eduardo Nunes couldn't get to, to Saratoga. She relaxed. She settled. I mean, she's fast, so she's always going to be close. I don't understand why he felt that compelled to engage the horse they named after my wife, Richie's sweetheart, mm -hmm. so early. When he could have just sat outside of him longer. I, I got nothing to say to that whole exchange, <laughs> but I, I actually do agree with you, Richie. And, you know, and it also shows the job that some of the riders can do at getting horses to settle more easily. Don't want to be too hard on Nunez. He's done a good job with her. This is a very good filly. And let's not take anything away from Ageless, who I believe won this race last year, or was mm -hmm. second this race last year. She's the older horse, the six-year-old, and she got it together to beat her. But I still feel like Lay Shipman's the better horse. But... You wonder if she didn't handle the ground a little bit here and the Breeders' Cup sprint, a turf sprint is at Keeneland, mm -hmm. how confident can you be going to that race? Yeah, that's the whole thing. That was my gut feeling just exiting out. It was a little bum. Lady Shipman yeah. got run down yeah. as well because she really has been for an off-the-beaten-path kind of filly who did win a few races at Saratoga. She's been one of the best stories, I'd say, post-Triple Crown. I agree. And you think about Keeneland's turf course, it's sand base. It's a little looser on top. It didn't look like she was as comfortable as she was on that hard ground in Saratoga. And it's not going to get firmer for the Breeders' Cup. All right, let's move on. We stay at Keeneland. In fact, backtrack to Wednesday. We know the race is a bit old, but considering the determined effort here from Harmonize, we've got to show it for Phil Mott. She's on the far, far, far outside, about 10th or 12th of 40 coming down the stretch. This was amazing, Richie. Yeah, this was a remarkable performance. And, and you know, you think she in Saratoga, she laid up a lot closer. Yeah. Here she was out the back, got swung extremely wide, and still finished resolutely to get up. Um, you got to think this race puts her as one of the main contenders for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Philly Turf. I mean, I don't know how to compare it to the Euros that are going to come. And, you know, we'll see some horses in California. But either the ones behind her can't run, but there was four and a half lengths between second and third, which certainly doesn't bode well for third through 14th. But this was impressive. Yeah, it was very impressive. It's hard to go that wide, you know, especially on, on the turf. And, I, I mean, it, it was a really good performance. And this is a Philly, I think, has stepped up her game every start. Maybe there's another forward move. Uh, I, there will be forward moves at, at some point, whether it's in her next race or not. But, boy, was this a visually impressive win, even money or not. No, good-looking Philly by Scat Daddy. Bill Mott had a number of good-looking two-year-old turf horses throughout the summer at Saratoga. Harmonized one of them we've already had in the meantime. A couple of winners by successful appeal on tonight's show her eminency and of course ageless who won the uh, franklin county let's get it down and out actually i thought we were skipping the reload race we've got it in let's just show it here as we check out reload and the black and cherry sitting the pocket beneath hot riding jose ortiz who won his fourth race on saturday reload got it done and got it done because of the good riding jason as you pointed out by jose ortiz but Reload is not back to the good Reload. Whether it's issues or whatever it is, this is not necessarily the horse we saw in his first start this year, nor the first start, the starts before the layoff. Now, th th that Reload, when that the hole presented itself turning for home, would have exploded through there and won off by daylight. He got it done, but it looked like he struggled to get it done. All right, let's move on to the action out. At Santa Anita, two-year-olds on the turf. You would imagine you may get a couple starters heading towards the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf in the next couple races we're going to check out. First up, the Zuma Beach for the two-year-old Colts and Geldings. And this was trainer Janet Armstrong, who I'm not familiar with, her first stakes win in California. It's hard for me to know how good these horses are, but I don't know about you, Richie. I thought Dresden Her Hermes actually ran very well in here because this was the one horse in here watching the race early that I never thought was really in a comfortable position, yet came rolling by. No, and, and he had trouble in the first turn, yeah. got keen, ran up on heels, had a steady, swung out. And, and then he was trying to lug in and uh, gave Gary Stevens a hard time. He couldn't really fully ride him through the stretch, holding him off of horses. He looks like a horse with ability that's still very green. But I'm with you on this. I, I just don't know the entire quality of this field. I don't. And I haven't looked at the figs, to be honest with you. I don't know how good these horses are. And they're so lightly raced and looking through their PPs and aren't any answers. You could say that about a number of the two-year-olds heading towards this race but they don't have the bottom that Harmonize has. But still, I thought considering this horse never got a comfortable rhythm, it was a good effort regardless. It was a real good effort. And how about the uh, ageless exact? If we go back to the horse ageless, 
Gary Stevens over Mike Smith. Yeah, amazing. Those guys were at the top of their game when I first started coming to the track in the early 90s. They're still getting it done, and they'll certainly have some live horses going forward to Breeders' Cup week and weekend at Keeneland. Let's wrap up the action. Just a rolling double and a quick double at Santa Anita. We'll spend a bit more time, though, on Saturday's Surfer Girl for the two-year-old Phillies as we had another. What's going on with the Phillies? Another disqualification. Uh, this incident happened further towards the wire than the race in the QE2. Yeah, this race actually went faster than the boys. Two-fifths of a second faster than the boys. The pace was a little bit faster, but not much. Interestingly enough, the winner of this race stays in Vegas. The dam is a Phipps horse, and I think the third dam is Heavenly Prize, actually. Kind of cool seeing it. There is the horse on the inside does get shut off. The question is, was it the outside horse? hurting in the middle horse or the middle horse cutting her off and and i'm gonna go with it was the middle horse and the stewards actually got this one right i i, I know it's I, I understand what you're gonna we're gonna talk about it when we watch the, the head on that the winner does drift but there's always space between the winner and the second place billy lucky folly who does get disqualified and at the point when all the worst damage is done i felt like the winner was clear yeah, I, you know, Richie, I'm not, once again, I'm not arguing what you're saying. This one is just very hard. I just feel in watching it, and I watched this head on a number of times at home, you know, you sort of stack it up. It felt to me like you could make enough of a case that the horse on the far outside is coming in some, as the one in the middle does, that you could make the argument that there was hurting going on and hurting Gary Stevens in a little bit, and that caused him to go over the one on the rail. I get your argument, too. I just thought this was a very tough call. Not that they made the wrong call. No. And I would agree with that. And you do see that the, the winner was drifting over, lugging in a little bit. Alex Lee switches to a left-handed whip. But I think at the point where the actual foul occurred, even though, yes, that the, the runner-up was running away from the winner, I think it was all on the runner-up at that point. Now, fair enough. I'm not, I, I, I wasn't, I didn't have a definitive strong opinion. I was talking to Jay Priven out in California who agrees with you on this call, and I certainly respect both of your opinions a great deal. I just thought it was kind of tricky because I tend to really look at hurting because you see him coming in there and they both end up on the one and two path. So there's no question the outside horse does come in. Your point being though that Gary was sort of coming over or had an opportunity not to come over and he may have come over sort of first. If there was no daylight between those two horses, I would say absolutely then it was as much on the winner as the runner-up, mm -hmm. or even more so. Um, the fact of the matter is that when Gary Stevens steadied, he steadied because Tyler Bays was screamed at that point because he got put in so tight. I don't know that he even realized how close he had put him in at that point. Very possible. 237, whether you agree or not, that was the winning try at a little over $300, and Alex Elise turning back the clock. Hall of Fame riders here on the show, and it's all about the two-year-olds as we head down the stretch on the National Racing Report. Back to Belmont Park. We come up on a uh, weekend in which we've got the Futurity, Matron, and Athena. A week after that, it'll be a real tradition here, it seems, over the last couple of decades. Empire Showcase Day. The best New York breads around, the ones that aren't pointing towards the uh, Breeders' Cup, will be uh, putting on a show in multiple stakes throughout the afternoon. We've got room in the Garden Terrace, $35 a person. NYRA.com, the place to go to check that out. Let's move on to the action here. In fact, just a few days ago, Sunday's second race had a cool more exact with Giants Causeway over Uncle Mo. They really bet the horse on the lead, Sea Wizard, in the blue cap. Yeah, Sea Wizard had to kind of look for these low profile connections that might be a live burster. And when you see profile connections like that being two to one against the Todd Fletchers and Kieran McLaughlin's, and everybody was in this race, you know the horse is live. Maybe the seven furlongs got to him. Destin, the winner, who had a big pedigree for Todd Fletcher, really didn't take any money, but got the job done on a relentless ride by Javier. There's a lot to like about both the winner and the runner, but particularly the winner taking dirt stuck in traffic, looking to get outside, finally ducks back to the fence when that hole presents itself, switches leads late, and really, I thought, showed a professionalism beyond his two-year-old years and his first start. Yeah, no, I mean, Todd has really not had any good two-year-old Colts so far this year, and maybe Destin is the one that he's been waiting for, whether or not, you know, obviously it's too soon for him to run back in, in three weeks, I would guess, in the Nashua. Mm -hmm. So I imagine they'll take more time with him, whether they look for an allowance or he ends up just going to Florida and taking his time with him. But Destin does seem like a horse with a little bit of a future. Would you guys both say that we were a little bit maybe disappointed with the two-year-old Colts earlier in the year, but we're seeing some emerging horses just maybe a little later developing. 
Yeah, no, no kidding. I mean, we spent a lot of time talking about even the race that comes to mind, Mohamed, and that good maiden race, the uh, runner-up, uh, whose name I forget, ran Seymour really Dini. well. Yeah, Seymour Dini. And even then, the third uh, horse ran and well And what there. about uh, Chad Brown's uh, maiden winner in the, the New York cap on, on oh. Gold Cup Day? Um, oh, absolutely. That horse, that horse is Gift horse Box, as well Gift as the second-place finisher in that race for Linda Rice, whose name escapes me. He's got a funny name. Oh, I can't uh, remember. Nat, Nat Cole King Matt, or something Matt like that. King Cole. <laughs> yeah, thank Actually, you very those much. are very impressive horses. Those horses were good. The champagne was good. The whole two-year-old division is starting to firm up. Colts even had fillies, and we'll see some fillies coming up now. Yeah, let's do it, actually. We stay at uh, Belmont Park. It's in fact, Colt. we do have a Colt. In fact, by Gio Ponte last Thursday, he was odds-on at Pierloni. Barely got the mile, but he was saved by the wire. You know, some people were critical of Joe Rosario because he almost got beaten. The pace was pretty quick. I thought he took this horse and he made everybody come and get him. They almost did come and get him, but I couldn't criticize the ride, Richie. Well, I couldn't either because I also think the horse was a bit keen. I think the horse was taking him, and Joel's not a guy that's going to get in a big wrestling match. He's trying to just keep him settled and quiet. And uh, you know, it, it's interesting to me, though, with his pedigree, Gio Ponte, that he's got the kind of speed that he has. Okay, you know, maybe that's not fair, though. Gio Ponte he had speed. They just taught him to use it at a different stage of the race. Yeah, no, I, it opens up some possibilities with this horse, but regardless, this horse in his maiden debut at Saratoga finished second to the horse that came back and won the Champagne, so obviously he's got talent. And that horse, Greenpoint Crusader, and we see uh, Ralph Nix, who clearly spends the bulk of his time down in Florida, but he's got a little little string here in New York. He's putting up some good numbers. Been very impressed with the job his stable has done as a whole over the last month and change here in the Big Apple. Totally agree. All right, Do you guys but, remember Ralph Nix as a jockey? No. You obviously. Yeah, yeah, he had he had the buggy. Did you, you ever put him over the fence? Or no, anything? no. I was very nice to Ralph. Okay. All right, nice so check. You took care of those bug riders, Absolutely. didn't you? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what goes around comes around. Let's move on to the uh, two-year-old Tappet Phillies, and it was. Gold Cup weekend was all about Tappet. Tonalist, of course, won back-to-back -back Jockey Cup Gold Cups. The day after, a pair of very expensive two-year-old fillies by Tappet took both divisions of the maiden special weight races. Up first is the uh, great daughter of Tappet, welcoming for Christophe Clement. And interestingly enough, and you'll look at very different-looking races on the racetrack, but they went two hundredths of a second apart. This one actually went 136.75, two hundredths of a second faster than the other one. This was probably a better field and also featured a faster pace. She had a very good trip, but she was attending a quick pace. And at the end of the day, welcoming her third start has gotten better with each start. Typical Christophe Clement, promising horse. Oh, very promising. I loved on the back stretch when she was in that you know third position, how she was in the bridle the right way, not overly eager, but letting Joel, you got horse. You, you knew that he was all there in his hands. And it's hard for a young horse to stay that consistent in the bridle. I think her, th her third start, she's really learned the game, and she's set up for a good career. Yeah, no, I think it'll be interesting, because both the horses in the next one we'll talk about in a minute, these horses could meet the Tempted, which I believe is closing weekend here. That would be a fun meetup, and they head towards the Demoiselle possibly as well. Could be an exciting fall, it usually is. Both good fillies, things on the two-year-old filly scene picking up. There's a few good ones pointing to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, and let's see what Inheritance did a couple of hours after welcoming broke her maiden for trainer Steve Asmussen. She turned some heads earlier in the year was purchased for just under two million dollars as a two-year-old in training she was a good second first time out late in the saratoga summer and on october 4th she crushed the field the official margin 16 lengths yeah when the second choice near a half to bernardini corella really didn't do any running inheritance didn't have a lot of competition so even though the same time it looks more impressive on the track this is a nice horse though rich oh my gosh well both these fillies and and you know what do we say? Tappets. Every week, it's more incredible. tappets, more tappets. And uh, this filly won so well. You know who she looked like? Her stride, the way she kind of out and down her head? Lady Secret. Now, I'm not saying she's Lady Secret. I don't want to get emails or get beat up You're on Twitter. You're just fooled by those sort of blue and yellow silks. You start thinking of Lady Secret as well. I don't know where she is right now. But, I, you know, I, I like about these races at Belmont. You see a lot of promise in Saratoga. But I think we see the two-year-olds come to hand more at Belmont Park, especially when we stretch out to a mile. And we saw it in the case with these two horses, and really all four horses or four races that we've shown here. There's a lot of promise in these races, and that's what the two-year-olds are. They're promised for the future. And that's the way it should be at this time of the year. You should be getting excited about the Triple Crown next season. Of course, the year-end stakes, the Breeders' Cup, even, even the Holiday Fest two-year-old stakes like the Remsen and the Demoiselle. 
And once again, the greatest game played outdoors. It is, and it's just so exciting. And you look at the things that are here and now and the future, and the two-year-olds will always represent the future. Yeah, it, it, it's fun. And, of course, when you see the emerging stars, and you can say, I was there the day that horse broke their mm -hmm. mate. Absolutely. I mean, I look back, and I can still remember being here the day Personal Ensign, who will always be one of my favorite horses of all time, and seeing her break her mate. And that was exciting that day, and she turned out, obviously, to be an all-time great. We remember lesser known too, but you also never forget certain horses. Hey, the game leaves a, an indelible mark on us. It's who we are. We're glad you joined us here. Privilege and a pleasure to catch up with you on MSG+. Plus. That'll do it for the show. We look ahead, much like the two-year-olds, to next week's show. Again, we'll have the Matron, the Futurity, the Athenia, maybe a little Empire Showcase Day uh, talk on MSG+. Plus A week from now, dark Tuesday and Wednesday, back at it this coming Thursday with the first race post at 12.55. Have a great night, everybody.